Whether you're playing sports, walking, or even just sitting around, you're using energy. Your body needs energy for growth, movement, and to repair cells. In fact, the same is true of all living things, including plants. This unit looks at respiration, the release of energy inside cells, in animals and plants. This energy is locked in glucose, which comes from the food that we eat and which plants make themselves. It is stored in the cells of the body. The energy locked into the is usually released by using oxygen. Breathing is the first step in getting oxygen to the cells for respiration. By breathing in, we take the air into our lungs from where oxygen is transported by blood to the cells. For us, breathing is an important way of getting oxygen into our lungs, but it mustn't be confused with the process of respiration. The air enters the lungs once this sheet of muscle, called the diaphragm, is contracted and becomes flatter, and these muscles in between the ribs have raised the chest up and out. The air flowing in is colder and drier than the air exhaled. It also contains more oxygen and less carbon dioxide. inhaled air travels down the windpipe and via the smaller tubes eventually reaches these tiny air sacs called alveoli. Each alveolus is so tiny that a grain of salt would more than fill it. They give the lungs a large surface area, have a good blood supply and very thin moist walls. Ideal conditions for the exchange of gases. They allow oxygen to pass into the blood and carbon dioxide to pass out of the blood. All the alveoli put together have a huge surface area, about 40 times that of the skin. This enables large amounts of oxygen and carbon dioxide to pass into or out of the body efficiently. We all have miles and miles of blood vessels in our bodies. Blood, loaded with oxygen, is carried from the lungs to the heart. The heart then pumps the blood around the body in the arteries. The arteries divide into very thin vessels called capillaries that carry this oxygen-rich blood to our cells where respiration takes place. Blood, now high in carbon dioxide, is carried in veins back to the lungs via the heart. When oxygen is used in respiration, in some ways it is similar to burning. Oxygen combines with food substances, the fuel, to release energy as heat. But burning happens very quickly, with a sudden burst of energy. With respiration, however, energy is released in a more controlled and manageable way, as and when we need it, through a series of chemical reactions in the cells. Plants also need energy and therefore respire. Cells in every part of a plant, from the root to the leaves, need oxygen to release the energy from glucose. Plants obviously haven't got lungs, so the oxygen is produced by the plant itself during photosynthesis. Water and carbon dioxide chemically combine to give glucose an oxygen. As all cells need energy, 
The sugar, made mainly in the leaves, is carried to the rest of the plant in these special tubes, called phloem tubes. The oxygen moves by diffusion through the plant from cell to cell. Any oxygen not used by the plant for respiration leaves the plant through these tiny holes on the underside of the leaf, called stomata. And is then part of the air around us, which we breathe in. And the whole process starts again. And so respiration can be summarised with this equation. When glucose combines with oxygen to give energy, carbon dioxide and water are the waste products. <laughs>